Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this time I'm going to show you a little contribution, how you, how to, you can contribute a little code to a CPAN module. So the other day I was trying to install MIME Lite. And this is the way I would install it. I type in on the command line CPAN MIME Lite. And what I noticed is that it gives me a message here uh, telling me that there are certain modules that it would like to install. These are optional, but it is highly recommended. Now the, my problem with this is that there are two problems at least. One of them is the file base name here. That's the standard module. Why is it mentioned here? The other problem is that actually I think most of these modules, if not all of them, are already on my system. So I now I'm confused by this. Uh, does it going is it going to upgrade them? Uh, which one exactly is need is going to be upgraded? What's going to happen? Uh, so I'd rather I'd rather not see this. I'd rather I'd rather. Um, help fix this uh, makefile pl uh, that generates this so i quit this uh, script so what what can i do i could fetch the, the source code of this distribution from cpan and try to fix it there but there might have been changes to the module since it was uploaded uh, last time to cpan so first of all uh, let's go to the metacpan.org and look for the module mime light this is actually the distribution i'm looking for right now so here is the uh, documentation of the module and what can i see normally here on the left hand side there should be a link uh, to the version control system of the distribution in this module you don't see it if i just look for another one so metacpan.org if i look for another module for example padre then you will see here clicking on here that here there is a clone repository link that link leads to the subversion repository of Padre we don't see it here so some people uh, don't add it to their metaml file or not, not yet uh, in some cases you can find the repository in the documentation but if you flip through this documentation you won't find any of the references so because I know Ricardo uh, and I know that he's using uh, GitHub for a lot, so I assume that uh, this module is also kept in the repository. So I go to GitHub. Uh, GitHub, and there I type in uh, his uh, nickname, which is RJBS, and uh, I look for the, the module. So I look for MIME Lite, and here it is, MIME Lite. I click on it this is the repository basically of the of the module I could fetch it from here for these are the links that you, I could use but I'd rather use uh, the more standard way here is uh, clicking on the f uh, on this fork button for this obviously I have to be registered and logged into github but that I or that I have already done so I click on the fork button and it will generate me a generate a fork of this project which is actually a good thing in in here and once the fork has been done then it will give me the urls from where i can fetch the repository so i go back to my uh, console here i'd rather go into the stemper directory and type in git clone and the url that i fetched from the github repository now this will bring in uh, over all the repository of that specific module and here it is already and now i can go into this uh, into the module into the directory and type uh, make file pl the standard way to install and see that the thing is still here although the file base name entry was taken already out so indeed uh, things has have changed since the latest release they were not released uh, to cpan yet so let's go and uh, take a look at the, the source code. Here, what can what I can see is that um, well, first of all, I don't see use strict use warnings, and then here is a huge print statement printing out the names of the modules, then the prerequisites, which are the requirements, and then prompting whether I want to add the additional prerequisites, um, these ones. So it is a slightly confusion here, and then here it adds the actual names. So let's do a slight refactoring uh, here. What I really want here is uh, 
go over the names of the modules that are optional, check whether they are already installed, check whether they are installed in the, with the right version number, and display here only the ones that are either not installed yet or that I installed but they are old versions. And if they are all installed with all the go good versions, then I don't want the whole thing to appear. So the prompt, and I don't want the prompt. So first of all, let's uh, move the definitions to the top. I take this uh, pre pre -rec and I to put it put it in the to top, and then let's unite the two, two two lists. So there is the list of the modules, and here is the same list again. Uh, let's uh, create one list. So hi here I put in a, a hash. Let's let's call that optional, and take the four values and create the sa the hash here. So. that still should be exactly the same. Now, as I'm going to compare version numbers, I think I'd rather have here zeros instead of undef, which basically these just mean that uh, we, we don't care which version of the module uh, you install, we just want to have that module to be installed. So now, I still have the same code. If I save the file and there is control that I put it in uh, the editor into background, now I can run the script just checking out whether the, everything is still the same so it looks so far okay I haven't broken anything. Now instead of these four values let's put in here a string. So here I just put in some kind of a string that I would like to print and let's fill that string here. So I have the str which should be empty at the beginning and then I go over for each my, sorry, that should be a dollar sign, a name, all the keys of the optional hash. So, I go over all of the entries and uh, I can just add them to the string. So I just add backslash t, the name, backslash n to the string. So basically this is still the same, right? Now I can remove this and I can run the code and it's still the same. So far, so good. Now comes the issue that I would like to check whether and include in this str only the ones that have uh, that are not installed or that are too old. So what do I do? First of all, I need to use the module sorry that should be name so use the name and I put the whole thing into an eval, eval string uh, so it will catch uh, the exception if the module is not installed then I check whether the module is uh, installed or not now if it's not installed then I need to put in uh, the string right so let's see if it's not uh, if there was no error message then everything is okay if there was an error message then keep it like this put it in the string okay but if there was no error message right then we still need to check whether the version number is correct so we say else if and then we put the name version this is the actual version number of the installed module and we would like to check whether it's smaller than the version that it's declared here. Optional name. If it's smaller, then we would like to add the same thing. So let's copy here. Otherwise, we just don't uh, add it. So let's see how what happens now. If I run the, the script, then it tells me well, it tells me the beginning of the report and the end of it, and there are no modules listed. So probably it means that either I made a bug here, or actually all the modules are installed. Let's uh, check that out. So what happens if I just change the name? And uh, indeed, so if the module name is something that's not installed, then it will show up here. That's good. So I didn't break that part. 
and uh, what happens if I put here 10 instead of version 1 then it uh, catches that module so apparently that module is still not at version 10 so they are both uh, parts are working and they are both uh, giving me the including the message now what I would like here is to display this whole thing the print and the prompt only if there were any values there and that's not too bad because not too difficult because the str string is going to be empty if we haven't added anything to it so we can check actually check whether if str and only if that str is there only then add the prompt only then print out anything and only then uh, prompt so if I now try this out again then it won't ask me anything because all the modules are already installed and if I go back and do my little test and put here let's say this version number and run the script again then it will tell me this modules need to be installed now because this module is although there but it's uh, an older version so it, a slight improvement would be to actually see so in this case when the version is uh, incorrect then I would like to see the actual version number so uh, actually here too I would like to see not only the name of the module but also the required version so I put in the required uh, version I, here I do the same right so in both cases I print out the name of the module that to be installed and the version number to be installed but in this case I also would like to put in we found and here I would like to put in the version number and uh, that version number should be my version uh, this optional name right so if I run this script now it will tell me that we are going we want to have mime types 10.28 uh, we found oh that's not good we found the same version number so uh, no not the optional name we need here the name and arrow version right this is what we found so if i run this again then indeed it's better so we want this one but we found this version so that's it i think uh, except that i have to put it back to the right version number and it's now seems to that i've added all the necessary uh, changes now a, a little bit more what i wanted is the use strict and use warnings and let's try to run the script again and now it says access something an error an array so let's look where this arrow where this arrays array can be found i use arc to look for access and well the only place where it appears in this code base is the makefile pl so probably it's just some leftover from an earlier version uh, i think i can safely comment it out uh, or I can well let's leave it for now let's comment these out and let's leave it for Ricardo to make the actual changes so now if I check try it again it it looks uh, it's working uh, go back to the editor I quit the editor a git status so these are the files that have been changed actually this file has been changed this is a new file that was generated it's not really interesting so what I need to now is git add make file pl that will tell git to that this file should be added back to the repository and now you see that's green and then git check in uh, make option no modules optional okay and that's it so I checked into my local git repository and then I can git push uh, push the repository out to github 
and once that's done okay so it's sent out to my git repository and I go back if I manage to do that I go back to my repository I can actually refresh this screen and then uh, we'll see that this is the last change in the repository and now I can send the pull request it's basically a message to Ricardo to integrate the changes uh, make optional uh, module prompt from optional and uh, that's it so I send the pull request this will send the message to Ricardo and he hopefully will integrate the module soon I hope that uh, you learned uh, how to help uh, with a SIPA module here uh, I'll try to do some other stuff uh, with the same idea later on thank you for listening bye bye